Season 1 of The Crown begins in 1947, where Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark renounces his titles and takes the name Philip Mountbatten in order to marry Princess Elizabeth, the heir to the English throne. Philip quickly rises up the ranks of the Royal Navy, and the two give birth to two children, Charles and Anne. Meanwhile, Elizabeth's father, King George VI, begins to fall gravely ill. Members of the cabinet begin to grow concerned about Prime Minister Winston Churchill's abilities to govern, leading to Deputy Prime Minister Anthony Eden asking George to persuade Churchill to step down. George refuses and soon after dies in his sleep. Following the king's death, Elizabeth assumes the role of sovereign. Just like her father, Elizabeth is pressured by her advisors to ask Churchill to step down. A great smog has come to London, killing thousands, and Churchill's inaction angers the cabinet. Before Elizabeth has a chance to speak with Churchill, his secretary is struck and killed by a bus due to the smog affecting visibility on the road. This inspires Churchill to take action, delivering a passionate speech and developing the Clean Air Act to prevent future smog. And so Elizabeth decides to let Churchill remain in office. King George's brother, Edward VIII, returns home for the first time in 20 years, having previously been the king but abdicating the throne to controversially marry a twice-divorced American socialite, Wallace Simpson. Edward immediately clashes with his mother, Queen Mary, and George's widow, the Queen Mother, who still resent him for his shameful and harmful actions toward the monarchy. Despite this, Elizabeth frequently turns to Edward for counsel. Elizabeth's younger sister, Princess Margaret, begins an affair with the divorced Royal Air Force officer, Peter Townsend. The Church of England forbids divorcees to be remarried, so Margaret and Townsend would need Elizabeth's support to get married. Following advice from Edward, who had experienced marrying a divorcee and shaming the monarchy, Elizabeth forbids the marriage, devastating Margaret. Meanwhile, Philip begins to grow frustrated at feeling like nothing more than a prop to Elizabeth, leading to a very public confrontation. This begins to strain their relationship, and Philip begins to spend more time away from the palace, while Elizabeth grows close to her horse racing manager, Lord Porchy Porchester, which further escalates the fracturing of Elizabeth and Philip's marriage. Elizabeth affirms to Philip that he was the only man that she ever loved, and he apologizes for his actions, leading to the couple reconciling. As the season comes to a close, Winston Churchill finally resigns, with Anthony Eden succeeding him as Prime Minister. In Season 2 of The Crown, the marriage of Elizabeth and Philip continues to crumble. After discovering a photo in Philip's briefcase, Elizabeth becomes convinced he is having an affair with a Russian ballerina. When Philip's secretary Michael is served divorce papers due to infidelity, the press begin to investigate Philip and Elizabeth's marriage, and Philip is forced to fire Michael. Philip then confesses to Elizabeth that he resents their son Charles outranking him, and that he wants more respect from the palace staff. And so, Elizabeth names him His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Following this, the two once again reconcile and give birth to another son, Prince Andrew. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Eden orders British troops into Egypt to handle the Suez Crisis. Immense international political pressure forces Eden to withdraw the British forces, leading to a historic setback in foreign policy and the ruining of Eden's reputation. Eden is forced to resign from his position, and Chancellor Harold Macmillan is made the new Prime Minister. Macmillan serves as Prime Minister for many years until he too is forced to resign due to ailing health. Princess Margaret is still reeling from her breakup with Peter Townsend when she meets photographer Tony Armstrong Jones. Tony takes a photo of Margaret in which she appears nude that Margaret has published in the newspaper, shocking both Elizabeth and the public. When Margaret learns that Townsend has gotten engaged to a much younger woman, she pressures Tony into proposing. Elizabeth discovers that Tony may have fathered a child during a series of sexual relationships, but decides to withhold that information from Margaret. And so Margaret and Tony get married. Queen Elizabeth is forced to deal with another massive scandal when historians discover classified documents known as the Marburg Files. These files detailed Edward's past association with Adolf Hitler, including he and his wife Wallace being Hitler's personal guests after their marriage. Most damning was proof of the Nazis' plan to reinstate Edward as a fascist king of England should they come out of the war victorious. Following this revelation, Elizabeth condemns Edward and banishes him from the royal family. As the season comes to a close, the fractures in Elizabeth and Philip's marriage re-emerge. 
A massive sex scandal rocks the country, involving the Secretary of State for War John Profumo and a young model named Christine Keeler, who also happened to be having an affair with Soviet Captain Evgeny Ivanov. This affair was feared by MI5 to be a massive security breach, and it was all facilitated at a lavish sex party hosted by a man named Stephen Ward. Ward is put on trial but ends his own life before a verdict is reached. Prince Philip is believed to be in photos from Ward's parties, and a hand -drawn picture of Philip is found in Ward's belongings. Elizabeth confronts Philip over attending Ward's sex parties, but he denies having ever been involved. Prince Philip reaffirms his love and support for Elizabeth, and the two reconcile once again, leading to the birth of Prince Edward. I just want to cut in real quick and tell you about this video sponsor, Established Titles. Elizabeth might get to be a queen, and Philip might get to be a prince and a duke, but with Established Titles, you can be a lord or a lady. By purchasing a title pack from Established Titles, you'll be the owner of your very own dedicated square foot of land in Edelston, Scotland, where historic customs refer to landowners as lairds, which is lord or lady in English. You'll get your own frame certificate, which features your own unique plot number, which you can use to find the exact location of your land. And once you become a lord or a lady, you can use that title on any document that uses prefixes, like credit cards or plane tickets. I'd show you my own credit card for proof, but that would make me a fool and not a lord. My favorite thing about established titles is that it helps preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland and helps the global reforestation efforts. Established Titles works with global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, and with every order placed, they plant a new tree. Another cool feature? The first 200 people who purchase a title pack using my link will have a plot of land within walking distance from mine, so we can basically build our own little chill kingdom. Established Titles makes a great last minute gift for the holidays, and they're actually running a massive sale right now, and if you use my code RECAPCHILL, you'll get an extra 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash RECAPCHILL to get your awesome gifts and help support the channel. Now let's get back to the recap. Season 3 of The Crown opens with the death of an old Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, and the welcoming of a new Prime Minister, Harold Wilson. Rumors begin to spread that Wilson was a mole working for the KGB, but Elizabeth discovers that the real mole was her art advisor, Anthony Blunt. Blunt also happened to be in possession of evidence of Philip's involvement in the Profumo sex scandal. And so, the royal family never publicly acknowledges Blunt's treachery in an effort to protect themselves from further media scrutiny. Cabinet members begin to express frustration at the royal family's lavish lifestyle and expenditures, which is made worse when Prince Philip publicly complains about the tightening of the budget and the fact that he was forced to sell one of his many yachts. This is all a part of Philip's midlife crisis, as he begins to feel he has never accomplished anything. Broken and faithless, Philip meets Robin Woods, the Dean of Windsor, who helps restore his faith and give his life meaning. Philip's uncle, Lord Mountbatten, begins to cause some trouble of his own when he attempts to stage a coup to overthrow Harold Wilson and name himself the new Prime Minister. Elizabeth discovers the plan and rebukes the Lord Mountbatten. Mountbatten also grows close with Elizabeth and Philip's son Charles. Charles falls in love with a woman named Camilla Shand, currently dating Andrew Parker Bowles, whom his family disapprove of. When Charles asks Mountbatten for help in convincing the family to support a marriage to Camilla, Mountbatten instead schemes with Elizabeth to put an end to the relationship. Camilla is married off to Andrew, and Charles is shipped off to a posting in the Caribbean for eight months. Throughout the season, Princess Margaret's marriage to Tony falls apart, and she begins an affair with a man named Roddy Llewellyn. When photos of the affair are made public, Margaret and Tony proceed with their divorce, the first divorce in the royal family since Henry VIII in the 16th century. Publicly ridiculed and struggling with severe depression, Princess Margaret attempts to kill herself. Fortunately, she survives, and Queen Elizabeth emotionally confesses to Margaret that she was the most important person in her life. The two sisters reminisce and bond, and as the season comes to a close, Britain celebrates Elizabeth's Silver Jubilee, which marks the 25th anniversary of her serving as Queen. In Season 4 of The Crown, Margaret Thatcher is elected as the country's first female Prime Minister. Thatcher and Queen Elizabeth quickly clash over their differing beliefs, with Thatcher making significant spending cuts in the face of heavy opposition from her colleagues. When Argentina invades the Falkland Islands, Thatcher declares war. Frustrated by the collapsing economy, unemployment, and inexpensive war, a man named Michael Fagan manages to break into Buckingham Palace to confront the Queen and demand her to save the country from Thatcher. Things come to a head between Elizabeth and Thatcher when the Queen supports sanctions to help 
help end the apartheid in South Africa. But the Prime Minister refuses to sign the sanctions out of fear for their effect on the British economy. Eventually, Thatcher agrees to support the sanctions after they are renamed Signals, but the rift has already formed. Although the Queen is supposed to be apolitical, Elizabeth allows rumors of her feud with Thatcher to leak to the press. When Deputy Prime Minister Geoffrey Howe resigns from his office and gives a speech criticizing Thatcher, it causes her entire cabinet to turn against her. While Thatcher at first considers dissolving Parliament to remain in power, Elizabeth convinces her to instead accept defeat and resign. Meanwhile, as Elizabeth and Philip's son Prince Edward comes of age, he is given the role of Counselor of State, which pushes Princess Margaret out of the role and further into depression. When Margaret begins seeing a therapist, she discovers that her two cousins, Nerissa and Catherine Bowes Lyon, long thought to be dead, were actually institutionalized. The cousins suffered from severe developmental disorders which the royal family wanted to hide. Margaret is appalled by this family revelation and becomes further disillusioned. Charles is continuing his affair with Camilla Parker Bowles, but when Lord Mountbatten is assassinated, the prince reads a letter written by his now deceased great uncle that urged him to find a suitable wife. And so Charles begins a relationship with Lady Diana Spencer, who quickly impresses the entire royal family. As his family pressures him to marry Diana, Charles continues his affair with Camilla. After getting engaged, Diana develops an eating disorder due to the pressures of being part of the royal family and the stress of being married to a man she didn't truly know. Princess Margaret, who had her own history of failed relationships, warns Elizabeth and Philip to stop the marriage, but the Queen and her prince persist. And so, Charles and Diana are married in a huge public celebration. As the years pass, Princess Margaret's warnings prove to be right, as Charles and Diana's relationship deteriorates. Despite now having two children together, William and Harry, Charles continues to harbor a love for Camilla, while Diana begins an affair with a man named James Hewitt. Further straining their relationship is Charles' bitterness and resentfulness over Diana's continually growing public popularity. Charles then decides he wants to end the marriage to be with Camilla, despite Camilla's very real concerns of a harsh public backlash. Charles' parents are then forced into fixing their son's mess, with Elizabeth forbidding Charles to go through with the divorce, and Philip convincing Diana to remain loyal to the royals. As Diana dreams of a love and life away from the crown, Philip forebodingly warns her, let's just say I can't see this ending well for you. What events are you most looking forward to seeing covered in The Crown Season 5? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.